guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something to me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Damn, coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of In Case of Emergency. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. I guess we should go help them, huh? Ooh, pretty. Around an impromptu campfire, you retrieve the graham crackers and marshmallows from the back of the car. The four of you, ooh, excuse me, the four of you make s'mores and watch the sunset, and stand still, stand... The sand's still warm from the afternoon sun. You laugh and share stories around the fire as you drink. You feel lighthearted and giddy, the alcohol providing a pleasant buzz and letting you escape your own mind for once. Eventually, everyone passes out on the sand except for you and Luke. Not wanting to disturb the others, the two of you take your conversation towards the shore. Huh, it's cold! I thought... Ah, it's cold! I thought decade... I thought beaches were supposed to be warm. Need something? I can grab an extra towel from the trunk. Who are you? Thanks. Thanks. You nod, and Luke slips away to the car. He's not usually the self, the selfless type. You like to think you've been a good influence on him. You remember your conversation from earlier and how it was cut off. You think about the castle and how you wonder if this version of Luke would even recognize it. Is this version of Luke real? What about your friendship? As you sit on the shore, you think about you think that the wet sand under your toes feels plenty real, as does the gentle sound of the surf and the deep blue of the horizon. But if you've learned anything, it's that the only world that doesn't feel real is reality. The one where you're an unemployed loser stuck in a remedial stuck in remedial lessons a lessons a summer after you should have graduated. No friends, no family, no prophecy. Towel for your thoughts? Luke tosses you a lengthy beach towel decorated with fuchsia, hibiscus, and orange trim. You wrap it around yourself and shiver. There's only one left, so you better scooch over. You have to stretch one arm like a like a membraned wing. Then Luke weasel in next to you. You awkwardly fumble around until you're both sitting in the sand, cocooned in the same towel. Hey, what were we talking about earlier? Hmm? The castle thing? Luke scratches at his chin, raking his claws through his fur. You okay? Luke turns to you with worry in his eyes. You've never seen such an unguarded expression in his eyes, and it disarms you. There it is again. A feeling that this isn't the Luke you knew, accompanied by the tug in your heart that this could be the Luke you know. Are you real? Are you... Are you real? You don't know why, you're, why your voice catches as you ask. Luke just quirks, he, quirks a quizzical smile. Why do you ask? Too good to be true? I like you. Because you're my friend, and I want to know that I want to know what we have. Aw. Hey, you're my friend too. You might actually be my best friend. Don't don't go getting an inflated ego about it or anything. You barely knocked our group sugar daddy, and he searches for the right words. Salty mommy out of the running. This might come as a surprise, but I don't actually have a lot of people I'm close to. I know I can be a lot sometimes. I just need to know that anyone who sticks it out knows that they're, what they're getting into. Luke, you're my best friend. You might be my only friend. I know what I'm getting into, believe me, and I wouldn't be here if I didn't plan on sticking it out. Thanks! I'm honored, really. Luke chuckles and pulls the tower tighter or towel tile around tighter around himself. Looks like he could use a hug. You reach out under the towel to pull him around the shoulders into a side hug, but your arm only finds air. Everything okay? I don't... You frown and reach out a hand try to touch Luke again. The tips of your fingers passes through his body like it's made of gas. You touch him with your other hand, just to make sure. He's solid now, but... By the start, you realize that it's your arm that's gone transparent, not Luke. He's not the one becoming immaterial. You are. Fuck! You scramble back in alarm and jump to your feet. Kieran, whoa, what's wrong? What the hell's happening to me? Are you okay? Is this related to the last time? Fuck, am I dying? Am I dead? What's gonna happen to me? What? Talk to me, Kieran. Why would you... Are you even... Out of the corner of your eye, you spot something that makes your blood go cold. You beached onto the shore a few feet in front of you, just out of reach of the tide that swept it, swept it in, is the dick. You know it's yours. The last one you... The one you lost under the cabinets in Peregrine all those weeks ago. It's scuffed and marked with the smears of dirt, like the one sitting in plastic in the back of the convertible. Luke follows your eye line and spots it too. You catch his expression, morph into one of desperation. Ha! Huh, you think a mermaid used that? One second, y'all. Let me uh, drink some water. Okay. Take a step towards the deck, which Luke mirror mirrors. Hey, Kira, don't touch that. Take another step. Aw. You place your foot in front of the other. A wince of pain runs up your leg from your sprained ankle. If you lost the dick to the void and you're seeing it here, that means 
This isn't real. I'm still in the void. Kieran, please. Gritting your teeth against the pain, you keep moving forward. Each step knocks you back into reality, reminding you of where you came from and, hopefully, where you're going. The dick is at your feet now, exactly as you remembered it. You could pick it up. Pick up the dick. You reach out your arm towards the dildo. The transparency in your limb has subsided now, but it's like you're leeching the color out of the world to bring it to your bring it into yourself. Or maybe the color is just returning to where it came from. Kieran! You stop. Your hand is still hovering over the dick. Kieran, please, don't do this. Stay with me. Luke takes a wavering step towards you, his eyes so open and expressive in a way you've never seen before. You recognize it as a way you might never see again. Not on the real Luke. Pick up the dick. Oh! Oh, wow. That's a, that's a penis, all right. Your hand closes around the shaft of the dildo, and it's like being in a car that slams the brakes. You're thrown in place by the force of your world abruptly coming to a halt. The world appears to flatten until you're just two actors in front of a painted background going through your, going through your lines. Please, Kieran, you're my only friend. I, I love you. Tell me what I could do differently. Don't you get it? You could become part of this world. You could belong here. Please. I don't want to die. Oh. Oh my. Looks like we got an important decision to make here, y'all. Uh, I'm sorry. You know the longer you stay, the harder it'll be to leave. Oh. Gazing into the void, you know there's really only one way you can go. Dildo still clutched into one hand, you limp into the void, leaving the beach and its dream world behind you. In the darkness, you walk for what seems like an eternity. What was that decision? Oh, I didn't do anything, okay. Alright. Alright, so let's see. In the darkness, you walk for what seems like an eternity. Your ankle burns as you hobble through the emptiness. Your hand still clenched around the dick like it's a lifeline. For all you know, it is. What is this place? You can around for any identifying landmarks, but there's nothing other than the void as far as the eye can see. Ow! Your foot recoils in pain from the sharp object you stepped on. Bending down to pick it up, you find a thin wooden rail about three inches long and two wide. Hello? Is anyone out there? Only the silence responds. You're alone. No. I'm not. You're there, aren't you? Clearly you know who I am and what I want. What happened back there? That was all you, wasn't it? So tell me what to do. You stand in silence for a while. The void stretches out in front of you, no horizon to speak of. Finally, after a long moment, you hear the sound of rushing water in the distance. At this point, you're grateful to hear anything other than the sound of your own voice. You race towards the sound as best as you can, with your one good leg. In the distance, you spot an enormous cascading waterfall, thunderous in the empty void. What is this place? This is the void. Great, thanks, I got that part, but why am I here? How do I get back? How do I get here? How do I get back? All things that are lost in Peregrine must pass through here. This is where they are recycled and repurposed into something new. Alright, I'll let me pause it right here. Alright, let me one second, y'all. Be right back. You cannot return to Peregrine because this is Peregrine. Don't you see? As you approach the waterfall, you realize that its flow never quite reaches the ground. Before it does, it dissipates into the air and seems to float into void. Its particles warp before your very eyes. You recognize it as what was happening to you. And your hand became transparent. You're being unraveled, mined, harvested so that you could give birth to a new world. Okay, okay, I get it. I'm just thread, or raw materials or whatever. Is that what happened to everyone else who came through here? Remus mentioned that there were others before me. They got chopped up and processed down here, turned into more world? They were given everything they wanted, just like you. Had you stayed, you would have eventually become like them. Mountains and rivers, landmarks and lives. Except I left. Except you left. You could have stayed and been happy. Wasn't it what you wanted? Why wasn't it enough? Why did you leave? I had to go home. What home? You experience what you can only describe as the universe shrugging. You can do whatever you like, all things must come to an end, but you have to know, your return will not be easy. Where's Luke? When you fell, your friend jumped in after you. He's currently in his own pocket of void, much like the world you were once in. If you wish to leave, you will have to find him and bring him with you. Your anchor tethers you to the layer above Peregrine, the world you came from. You feel the dick buzz in your hand. It will always bring you closer to the world from which it originated. 
But before you can return home, you will have to pass through Peregrine once more. But how? How do I get back home from there? Just as an item anchors you to the world above, so too does an object forged from a void anchor you to the world below. Your hand instinctively reaches for the scabbard looped around your hip. At some point during your journey down here, it had to rematerialize at your side. You mean the sword? I have to get rid of it? If you are to break the cycle and leave, all artifacts must be returned to the void. The place from whence they came. You drum your fingers along the cold pommel of your blade. Despite everything, you don't want to let it go. You feel robbed of your time here, and a part of you still wants more. Wants to hold on to the sand slipping past your fingers. But standing here in the emptiness of the void, it feels nearly impossible to articulate this. Is this what you want? What kind of price are you willing to pay to linger a little longer in this world? There's only one way out, and that way is through. You take a deep breath, gathering what little remains of your mental reserves. Nothing but darkness lies before you. You're scared, but the promise that there's some kind of existence at the end of this, even if it's not the existence you want, gives you strength. You exhale, grip the dick stuffed into your pocket, pocket tighter, and keep going. Eventually, you come across a sturdy oak door in the middle of nowhere. <clears throat> On the other side, you can hear the clink of silverware on porcelain and the soft, ambient chatter of people. When you open it, you're greeted by the dining room of a fancy restaurant. Outside, you can see the city skyline twinkling like dying stars. Given the interior a quick scan, your eyes land on a familiar face. It's Luke. He's sitting alone at a circular table with a plate in front of him. There are two empty plates set up across from him. Luke! You push your way past surprised waiters balancing sky-high trays and patrons a little too deep in their glasses of Merlot. Luke! Oh, hey, man. What's up? Want to join me? Luke waves at a waiter across the room who arranges an extra seat for you at his table. What? What is this place? We have to get out of here. You have to come with me. Come with you? I barely even... Actually, never mind. Here, try this. An attendant places a small cylinder of cheesecake on your plate, the top perfectly golden brown and the crust still crumbly. Go on, try it. You reluctantly unravel your bouquet of utensils and cut into it with the side of your fork. I really hope this isn't a situation where eating food is consenting to stay here forever, because this cheesecake is really, really good. It's good, right? Yeah, but... Wait till you see the main course. But we're already eating dessert. Yeah, they do dessert first here. Weird, huh? you think they do a salad at the end to balance it out, but they don't. Only the good stuff. Luke pops a green macaron in his mouth. You think mint counts as a vegetable? Herbs are vegetables, right? Is weed a vegetable? Luke... You do a furtive sweep of the restaurant goers. No one stands out to you as a potential Agent Smith, ready to arrest you at the slightest hint of dissidence, but you feel like you shouldn't be heard saying this. One second, y'all. Water time. This is just an illusion. I'm here to break you out. What? Luke's jaw drops open, and the half-chewed macaron falls out of his mouth. He dabs at his lips with a cloth napkin around his waist as he calls out to no one in particular. Excuse me, I was told that the green ones were mint, not pistachio. Who even likes pistachio? I do. Can I get some herbs, stat? He grumbles and makes a show of cleaning his tongue on the napkin. Seriously, some people. What were you saying? He goes to take a sip from his wine glass. Luke, this isn't real. We have to... Luke does a spit take, narrowly missing you with the spray. You smell the tang of grape juice. This isn't real! What do you mean this isn't the real world? Everybody in the restaurant stares at your table like you're an unwanted but entirely expected cockroach in a shitty diner. Your undesired existence only elevates the experience's authenticity. See? Nobody cares! The people seated around you grumble but eventually go back to eating. Nice try, though. I think this is more believable than the buddy-buddy stick earlier. What? Definitely more interesting than me getting a six-figure salary right out of college. But who would want to graduate college to go to, and do an, go to another campus? Seriously. Is it the mind palace? It's the, is it the mind palace that doesn't get me, or, it, or is it me that doesn't get me? What? Luke, I'm real. I was in another world like this one. This is just a void projecting your fantasies back at you. You fish out the dildo from your pocket and suction cup its base to the table. It takes a few tries because it keeps slipping on the tablecloth, but eventually you get it standing full mast. Listen, I have an item from the real world that I can use to open a portal. We'll have to go through the Peregrine, Bri Pr Peregrine Prime layer. That's what I'm calling. F that's where I'm calling where we came from. Hang on, are we intercepted? Are we intercepted right now? But through there, we can eventually make it back to the real world. This is way more interesting. Than whatever is going on here, I like this version of you better, Kieran. 
Luke, I will stab you with this bread knife right now if it gets across my point. Okay, okay, jeez, let's, so, let's say you are real. Why would I even want to go back? Luke pretends to think about this. Let's see, real world. I haven't been there in almost three years. I don't know anyone. My life is a roller coaster out of my control, and not to mention the crippling student debt. This world, I can have whatever I want. I don't have to deal with things not going my way, and hang on. A waiter arrives at your table carrying two plates of steak. Luke pauses to thank the maitre d' like this was a rehearsed performance, picks up his fork and knife, and cuts off a slice. I know this steak doesn't exist, but I know that when I put it in my mouth... Luke, I swear to God, telling my brain it is juicy and delicious. Please don't do this. You know what I realized? He dangles the strip of meat in front of his face for dramatic effect. Finally, he puts it in his mouth and pauses to chew. And that's his mistake. He can't talk with his mouth full. Luke, we need to get the fuck out of here. I'll open the portal and drag you out if I have to. Hey, Borums. <laughs> Luke, can you please take things seriously for once? Yep. Are we done yet? Are, are we done yet? Are, are we done? Blip. Luke freezes, his hand passing through a, through a glass of grape juice like an apparition. Your frustration washes away as you recognize a familiar expression come over his face. You know what it feels like to have your body start to disappear on you. Yeah, this world's going to chew you up and shit you out as another mountain for Peregrine. Luke doesn't say anything. He makes a few more half-hearted tries to grasp the stem of the glass, and tries to grab a fork, a napkin, anything before finally giving up. Alright y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks for a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye